The following thoughts on Hoppy Hour represent Brian Hoppy and Pastor. Listener discretion is advised. Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Hoppy Hour. He is the voice of a generation that got screwed by the baby boomers. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour starts in four, three, two. Happy, happy, happy. This is Happy Hour with Happy and Alessia. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Oh my God, Alessia. When I tell you that I have the worst back pain right now, it's absolutely crushing my life. Do you know what I have right now? What? Plantar's fasciitis. In Isn't that in your foot? Yeah, it hurts so bad, and I feel so old for even saying it. And the name itself just makes me, like, cringe. I'm like, ew, what a There's a name. basketball player named uh, Joakim Noah, who was a really scrappy player, had his hair in, uh, like, a bun all the time. One of the best players to ever play for Chicago at the uh, center position. And he was really good. He played at the University of Florida and whatnot. And he got plantar fasciitis in 2011, and he played for another six, seven years and made millions. But once he got that plantar fasciitis, he was never the same player. So really? I can only, uh, he was he was good, but he was like a grinder. Like he would grab the rebounds and block the shots, and he was a funny guy. But it was really sad because once he got the plantar fasciitis, he was never the same. It hurts so bad. Like, I feel like he would probably have it best because he has like a team of, you know, doctors, personal trainers, all the things when you're an athlete that are like helping him recover his injury, essentially. So I feel like he had all the tips and tricks to probably make it better. I'm shocked. I do think about that aspect a lot. By the way, this is Hoppy Hour. I'm Ryan Hoppy. That's Alessia Calandra. Hello. But, but you would have known that from the 35 second intro. So we did. We just got right to the uh, content. I know. How rude of us. Hi, everybody. Hi. So the thing is, this is a lot of times when I'm in pain, it motivates me to become a millionaire, so then I can have access to the best healthcare. Because I'm telling you right now, I think I hurt my back by not. Stretching at the gym enough and doing that. Mm-hmm. My back right now hurts so badly. Does your gym have one of those like complimentary hydro massage machines or? No, I, I don't know if LA Fitness has that. We got to get you to crunch on fourth and get you a hydro massage. Like at the end of all your workouts, you can just go lay there. I wonder if I should switch from LA to crunch. I'm saying yes. I'm down for that. Great. I don't know your schedule, Mm -hmm. but I feel like us working out would be a vibe. I... I think we would do different machines, but I feel like it would be good energy for the show because beforehand... I was kind of anxious and it's probably because you're a mom and you got a very soothing vibe, but you're very fun to be around. Thanks, Ryan. I feel the same for you. Thank you. Okay. So going to the gym, um, are you one of those people that like plans like this is leg day this no, is biceps and no. i need that no but i don't know i don't know if i'm even into that i got tired with the gym and i play pickleball every week with a group of friends and i i love it you need to come play pickleball that that's what i need to fix my back first yeah that sucks i'm sorry it, it hurts so badly to wake up this morning i didn't want to get the only time i'm not in pain is when i'm sleeping and it sucks yeah, that's how I felt. That's how I feel with this planter's fasciitis, which is the worst name ever. <laughs> is this just us getting older? Let's let's be real. And I know a lot of millennials will make jokes on TikTok about getting older. I think and- it's for real though. Like even with when I was pregnant with my uh, second baby, I had sciatica, and even saying the word sciatica, I felt like the old. I'm like, what is happening to me? Um, and, uh, acupuncture actually healed that right up. But that was painful. That's in your booty, Ryan. It's like shoots up your leg into your butt. You can't, I can feel it. It hurts. Well, the thing too, is that first of all, booties must always be protected. So the fact (laughs) that a booty is in pain breaks my heart because that is something you must covet and protect. Right. Exactly. No booty. Number one. 
I don't know though, man. Like I'm like, is this just gonna be the rest of my life until I die? Is like, it like upper back, lower, mid, all? It's like where, right where we, here, mid. You need you need a massage. You really we need to schedule you after that. You desperately and need not one. the like Robert Kraft massage. You need what is a Robert Kraft massage? Robert Kraft is the uh, is guy who owns too? who owns the Patriots that uh, went to Hollywood, Florida, and a little weird little massage place uh, in an outdoor mall. They're all over Florida, especially Tampa Bay. The like happy ending massage places. Is that where we're going with this? One of those places. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It no. was a joke. You don't need that massage. You need like a back deep tissue. Relax. You need to relax today. We need Ryan Hoppy to and relax. I am pretty relaxed now. You were the person that I vented to because I went to Ian Beckles dignitary tea and kava house after work to vent. And even then, it's like a light version of me venting because everybody kind of has problems in life, so nobody really cares. So, like, you were the recipient of it, and I appreciate you. First of all, you're such an angel. You brought me fudge. Yeah. And there's there's nothing wrong with my life. I don't want anybody to, a to listen to think that, like, I'm unhappy or whatever, but it's just burnout. It's like... Like you get up at four a.m. and then you go to work and then I'm making a, a TikTok video and I I you hate are. even saying it. You are a hustler because then it makes it sound like I'm that's, bragging. Well, that's why I said it for you. That's why I said it for you. you. Ryan's a hustler. He is passionate about what he does. He's in the radio industry, and he's amazing. He's going to be a huge success. He is a huge success, but he is running himself into the ground and hashtag self care because it is 2023 and both of us need to take some time for self care. We both know that. What have you done so far? And let's see, it's the fifth right now. Yeah. What have you done the first five days for self care? Uh, what have I done? Okay. Um, I'm going to start with not exhaling so deeply on that. I played pickleball with my friends taking time with my friends or being in the car by myself for even a 15 minute drive feels like self care. I would love to do some yoga. I really feel like here's the thing I realized is like when I do have a second to myself, instead of like, you know, sitting in meditation or sitting in a dark room, which is what I genuinely like need. I need just quiet. I need to sit with my thoughts. Cause I, when, when through the day, do I get a chance to do that? Never. But then instead I'll sit and I'll like watch TV, which is, you know, filling my mind, but it's not sorting through all the anxiety and the crap and the stuff that's boggling me down. So if you don't take time to just sit in quiet or sit in a space, that's going to allow you to sort through that, then you just kind of keep carrying it on. I have a problem with TV right now. And the problem is that I'm not young anymore. And what I mean about that is this growing up, I got my TV in 2006. So I didn't see nine 11. I think I've told you this before. I didn't see nine 11 until uh, YouTube came out. We had TV in the early nineties through 2000 and we got caught allegedly taking cable from the next door neighbor. So I loved <laughs> renting DVDs from the library. I loved watching the wire Sopranos, Sons of Anarchy, Boardwalk, Boardwalk Empire, all these shows breaking bad in that. And then when I moved out of the house at 21 and went to Cleveland and then came here, uh, life happened and then I got busy mm -hmm. and then there's been times in 2017 2018 when I was just working promotions that I had the attention span to sit down and watch a show for an hour then I didn't do it for about two three years and then during COVID that was all I did I watched Ozark I'm not going to even list the shows but I watched about nine shows from March 2020 till about September so what I'm getting at is I feel like I have potential to find Zen by watching a show on HBO Max. And well, that. of course, it, it you disconnect when you're watching it. That's why we to, watch it. But then I I don't know how to disconnect anymore. I feel like my yeah. attention span is point two. Right, a, a, a minute long TikTok is too long for me, and I'm trying to. I feel like my my body needs like a factory reset. A hundred percent. I feel the same, but it's because we're not practicing it. Like I've been like, okay. How do we begin after this show? What can we do? And for listeners out there, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but for listeners out there that are going through the same thing, we could do this as a team. What could we do to actually, and not just say we're going to do a factory reset, 
Well, what do you think we can do to actually do a factory reset? I think truly it starts with disconnecting from technology. That's number one, TV, cell phones, all the things. Um, you, The thing is, like you said, when you are watching TV and I do the same, it's like we are disconnecting from you know, our children for a second or disconnecting from our lives for a second to sit on the couch and watch TV, but we're not actually disconnecting our minds to sit and relax unless we're sleeping, right? And even when we go to bed, we have our cell phone next to us. It's the last thing we see before we fall asleep and the first thing we see when we wake up. So what can we do? I mean, I think we should do those like um, sound bowl classes. And honestly, (laughs) when I'm sleeping- When I'm sleeping, unless I'm completely just dead, I'm dreaming and having anxiety. So sometimes I feel like I don't even, that's why when I go to bed, I make sure to like really go to bed. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by really go to bed? What I mean by that is. Do you listen to hip? Um, hypnosis music as, at night. My therapist recommended it like I, months ago. So what I do is I listen to hypnosis music until I get sleepy. I can't have it on while I'm sleeping, right? But I'll lay down and I'll listen to Michael Mike, Seely. <laughs> Mike Seely. That's who I was gonna say. And I I was weirded out the first time I left him on and his voice was playing because. So for those who don't know, like you can YouTube Mike Seely or a bunch of other kind of sleep hypnosis people that guide you through a sleep meditation, but it goes, their, their videos go on for hours. So it's meant to be played still in your subconscious while you're sleeping. So you're sleeping, it's still going on in the background. And then I'm like, what happens at hour two minute 35? Like, are they still speaking some crazy stuff. I'm like, what are they telling me while I'm asleep? So I zoomed ahead and I was like listening and it's all good. You're in the clear. They don't say anything crazy, Um, but it's relaxing, but it is weird to go to sleep to like a man's voice, like in my room. I did find it helped, Um, but yeah, I need to disconnect. I need to, I need something. Do you feel like maybe... Not if you didn't have kids, but it'd be easier to disconnect because do you feel like when you want to disconnect, they want to connect? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I mean, that's one of the hardest things is like at night, I have a pretty good routine down with them. We have a a bedtime set. We do prayer, books, kisses, all the things, right? And then they want to like come to my bed. Like the last couple nights, they all wanted to sleep in my bed. And when I say they, I don't have six children, but bless you if you do, I have two. Um, but it throws off, off all of our sleep if we're all in the bed and I'm not against co-sleeping. I'm just saying, yeah, I want to disconnect sometimes. And sometimes my daughter will come and she'll say, oh, I want to tell you about this. And I'll say, listen, um, I just need a minute, but when we get in the car, I would love to hear about that. How does she react to that? (sighs) Sometimes she's frustrated because she wants to get it out right away. But like mentally, sometimes I just have to stop her so I can gather my own thoughts and just take a second so I can fully give her my undivided attention. Do you think there's a chance in the future that, so how old are each of your kids? Your daughter's eight? Yep. And son is, let's see if you know, Ryan. Two. Yep. So do you think there's a chance? I don't know what the six year age gap would be like, but maybe in a few years they could go to each other for advice. Would that relationship possibly happen with your kids? I think so. I think it's even starting now, like this it's morning. beautiful. <laughs> I'm going to sound like a lazy parent. But I mean I was, that. I was laying in bed and uh, my son came up to me, the two-year-old, and he was all set. He was good. I was just kind of just taking a couple more minutes in bed and he wanted something. And I was like, well, you can ask your sister, you know, for help with that. And he did. He went up to her and asked for help, which was nice and um and everything so they are learning to rely on each other and they share a room right now which is new so they're um they each have their own kind of like twin bed set up i don't know life is an adjustment can you tell we're exhausted today i came to the realization Mm -hmm. that i don't think i'm going to be a parent you think you don't think unless i find the girl of my dreams yeah even then i just don't I'm too selfish. Yeah. Like. I can see that. I just. And I don't mean to be selfish in like. Like I I would like to say I'm a decent person. Yeah. But I just feel like I would mess up the kid because I would be annoyed. And I. 
my dad kind of was a douchebag to me at times. I miss him and would do anything for him to be here, but I would say that to his face, and I did. Like, he kind of messed me up a little bit, and I don't want to... I'd rather have my legacy be the last thing that's there, not <laughs> not continue it on. I um, I could respect that. I mean, I've met so many different people that are interested in children or are not interested in children, and everybody has their own kind of take on that. Before I came here, I went to um, a lunch with some girlfriends. One just had a baby and one is currently pregnant. And it kind of gave me baby fever. And I'm like, dang, the baby stage goes by so fast. Like my son's only two and a half years old, but he's already outgrown all of like the things that I put on my registry that I researched for months to get for his baby phase. And now they're gone. He doesn't even use them anymore because we're, we're past that. Does it feel defeating that you put in all this work to have like an Amazon wish list and then it's like, oh, he doesn't fit into that shirt anymore? Yeah. And it's, it's not even so much about the clothes. It's like these random products um, like um, a breast pump or random things. Hell yeah. And I'm like, oh, I kind of missed that stage. I missed that stage. Or I'm looking at my friends with her baby. I'm looking at my friend who's pregnant and excited for her first. And I'm like, dang, I had my first. I had my second. Am I going to have another baby? You Are know? you? I was just about to ask. If I had a husband right now, I probably would be begging him for another child. I love being a mom um, because I am single. The likelihood of it happening is slim, which makes me sad. Yeah, it does, honestly. I say if you don't, listen, I, I'm not one to give dating advice. Sperm bank. Kidding. I'm don't, kidding. That is just. Ryan, do you I, think I would, go, oh my gosh, but like no offense to anybody that has gone to a sperm bank. All offense. It's, it says. <laughs> no, a, if you want to go to a sperm bank, go to a sperm bank. It says a lot about the person though, that if that's what they have to go to for it. That is Cause, interesting. Cause like, it, it means that like nobody wanted to have a kid with you is that but no that's not true a lot of like lesbian couples might utilize a sperm so I, bank then i should clarify by saying if when, you're I, a when a heterosexual woman that's the one thing that i need to work on when i do broadcast because i need to be i'm not going to be fake woke and fake outraged but i do need to put into account the uh homosexual couples and yeah. that and all the other they's and them's a lot but of at the women same time if you're a hetero one second if you're a heterosexual woman and you're 36 you're probably not putting out the energy that people want to have kids with you if you're having to rely on that any other yeah. case there's nothing wrong with I it i would say though like there are women i've met that genuinely are heterosexual and they're like nope i would just rather raise a baby on my own and for me Someone who is a former teacher, loves children. Um, I've even considered fostering by myself as a single parent just because I love children so much and, and would want that experience. So, you know, but going to a sperm bank is another ball game. I don't know if that's for me. I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> so you don't want children. You want the legacy to stop with you. And, and I know what you mean about like, Having, trust me, I would fix a million things about my parents, but there's things I'm sure they passed down that are great to me. Um, oh no, my mom and dad are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. It's just. There's fear there. I think a lot of people have it. Because then like if my kids were to then have kids and then have kids and then have kids. Yeah. It's like, well, grandpa or daddy was kind of goofy in his early 20s, but figured it out but took the tension of the embarrassment he's had in his life at times and kind of took it out on us. And that's what I'm afraid of. Cause like, I will say like having my kids, um, there are things where I'm like, Oh my God, I'm definitely not going to do that when I'm a mom. And now I'm a mom and I'm like, Oh my God, I can't believe I'm this mother who puts an iPad in front of my kid at the restaurant. Or like, I can't believe I'm this mother who like, you know, can't control her emotions and yells at my children sometimes. Like, I don't want to be that mom, you know, but at least thank God I'm self-aware enough to kind of check myself. But it is, it's scary. That's um, why so many women have postpartum depression and anxiety. Here's what I'm wondering mm -hmm. is, Pressure. could it work if I had a nanny who helped me out? Do you, if I, cause the, the thing is this, this is for certain. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna admit something on my show. My mom just recently found out that I had my medical marijuana card. Mm -hmm, yeah. So I'm just. Are you afraid to admit that? It was interesting. Um, 
if I were to tell you how she found out, you would go, you talk about this person every time. So that's okay, all I'm no, going to say. No, I'm not doing that today because it's been a hard day. So I already no, no, meant- no, 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 no. But I found out during the good times yeah. back in like a year ago. Yeah. So it made me even more grateful. But I'm going on a limb here. I did my research. It can be reversed. What are you saying? I got a vasectomy. You did not. Yeah. I thought you were kidding when you told me that. No. And uh, could you explain the process of that to me? Man. Did you go under? You went under, right? No. So they, it was $5. You're, oh my God. Isn't that pathetic? No. Poor, no. You, it was not $5. Where did you go? Let me explain. Was it through your insurance and then yes. the copay was five bucks? Yes. Okay. Bless the insurance company. Okay. No, but no, 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 no. This was a legitimate place, okay. a legitimate doctor's office yes. through Florida Blue. Okay, okay. When I said five bucks, I was just being funny saying it was, but yeah, the copay yeah. was only five bucks. It would have been 500. With, it was a legitimate operation. Right. They gave me pain meds. Yeah. And um, what's the, what is the procedure like? So you go in for a consultation and they tell you it's not guaranteed if you got it reversed that you could have kids but it's not out of the realm, but you can't have kids. Like you can have kids. You just have to get it done within five to seven years. So I viewed it as if I'm not ready to have kids by 36 yeah. and I don't have somebody, right? then I'm not meant to be a parent. Oh my gosh. I One of my biggest, well, I'm not going to talk about me. Go. So then I want to know more. It was fascinating. So they're playing with my balls and doing whatever the doctor was while we're talking about our favorite Madden video games. It does. Okay. Explain this to me. The sperm is what impregnates the woman. You know what it's like? Uh Uh-huh. Is there no more sperm? No. Everything's working perfectly. They kill the sperm? What do they do to it? The blockage. Uh Uh-huh. It's like grabbing a hose and just bending it and not letting the water come out. So where does it go? I don't know, but it's, it's completely, I did but so much research. Healthy. Like if it's going into your body still, oh, then no. where trust, is it? Trust me. I mean, not. your body could be dissolved. Well, it's not going out, right? You said it's. I'm a single man. Uh-huh. And what do you think single men do around 5 p.m. when they're alone? Right. Trust me, everything is operational. But how does it not impregnate somebody then? I'm confused. You said it's like a hose that bends back. They explained it. I went to a... It sounds so like I'm saying... explain it to me. How does it not impregnate somebody? Because they're blocking off the part that you're just shooting blanks. Oh. Interesting. I need to study some anatomy of a man, I guess. Here's what broke my heart. Yeah. Is how, how cheap it was. It? Yeah. She's finding out now. What? Through this radio show. I just had to talk about it. If she knows I have my medical card. It was so funny. I told Ian Beckles about that. You think a medical card for marijuana is equivalent to a vasectomy and not having grandchildren? Ryan. Uh, Alessia, I'm... <laughs> Not the richest man right now. So if it's meant to be, then I can have kids and stuff. You can get it reversed. Okay. It there. I did so much research. Yeah. I spoke to people about no, it. It's I, your body. I'm glad. But you... I'm saying it's there's a attitude that you can't have kids. Mm-hmm. You're hurting your chances. But if you get it reversed within five to seven years, you can. Yeah. So right now I'm essentially thirty. I'm twenty nine. If I don't have a kid by 36. I don't want to be one of the old parents that's like 58 and my kid's graduating high school. I could see you as an older parent. And I, I think it's I think it's going to happen. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. I was just meeting with my friends, right? We're in our 30s and they're just now having their babies. I had my baby 10 years ago. She, I mean, she's going to be nine. A pregnancy is nearly a, a full year almost. And so 10 years ago, I, 23 years old, was having my first child. And now 32, 33, all of my friends are starting to have their first. I mean, everybody's a different. I did like being the young mom, but then you could be like the super young mom. And then the other moms don't want to hang out with you because you're like the teen to young mom. There's like a, there's like a fine line. There have been moments in my life that have really shown me that I'm not meant to be a parent. One of them was I was with somebody 
that used to be my roommate, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. And we were going to the vet Mm -hmm. and there was this kid that was really hyper. Yeah. And on the way home, I told the person, I said, man, that kid was really annoying. And she said, that was just a kid being a kid. Right. And that was when I, it was that moment. And then. Yeah, but Ryan, coming from a mother. Don't let that discourage you. I think sometimes other people's children annoy me too. But when it's your own child, it's not that they don't annoy you, but the annoyance is different. And you'll hear that from so many parents. It's just a different kind of love. Like my friend today, her baby's three months old. She's like, wow, you're right. Like I never knew a love like this until I had my baby. But with that being said, there is so much respect to you for feeling this way because so many people do and there's no pressure. Like, this is your life. You got a vasectomy. It's your body. And you do you. No, you do you, boo. No offense to my mom. Yeah. But <laughs> she's not going to, she's going to live to be 105. Because she's, she's um, unbreakable. That, so, yeah. So that will be 40 years. So I will be 69. But what I'm saying is I got a whole lifetime I don't want, she's not going to die soon, but I'm saying I'm the younger person in that situation. So if she were to pass, she was a grandma, but then I got to deal with it. You know what I mean? Like you, you got to oh live your own, gosh. you got to live your own life. You, For you, sure you do. If you're not feeling it, like I met a new colleague yesterday who's like, nah, I'm not having kids. I've decided that's great. Do you like there's no judgment. Like if you're listening, there should be no judgment. You know, we always talk about the people in our families or our friends who pressure us and they're like, when are you having a kid? And like, when are you getting married? And when are you doing all the milestones? X, Y, Z. And it's a lot. And for 2023, our our goal needs to be just to focus on ourselves, set boundaries with people. You know, if they think they have expectations for our lives, like n- not to feel that pressure. Like we need to figure out and align with like what we want. And that goes back to like taking time for ourselves so we can get clear enough to know what what it is we want and what next steps are for our lives but if you're not taking time away from the tv or your phone or all the other distractions in life to get quiet and really clear with yourself then then you need to do that now that's your homework here's the thing too is the thing i need to work on is always having confidence even when someone disagrees with my decision so if I, t- and this is not me projecting. Oh my gosh, I have to tell you something after this. Okay, go. But for example, I'll tell somebody I got a vasectomy and the dude will be like, oh my God, good idea. Then the next person's like, <laughs> oh my God, why'd you do that? And right. I got to be as confident as when the person said, oh my God, great idea. And that goes to not caring about a compliment or an insult right. and not giving it power. That's because I know, example. Because I know my mom is probably not happy right now hearing that, but it's just, I'm not mature. I'm a mature person. I live on my own and I have a successful life that's kind of like beginning, but there's so much more I want to achieve. You're career focused, Ryan. That's the... Some people are career focused. Some people are family focused and some people are, are traveling the world and doing whatever. Like everyone has their own, uh, their own focus right now. Like there are some friends that are so much further along in their careers, but do they have children? No. And your career focus, like you're driven. So, I do have something weird to tell you. One last thing. Yeah. So when you add your kids. Yes. And don't take offense to me asking this. Yeah. Was it planned or was it an accident? It was she, my baby. She wasn't the best accident that best surprise that ever happened. Um, my partner and I didn't know each other very long, but funny enough, that I, I love telling this story because it just like feels interesting to me. But and then real, real quick, was, yeah. your, was your son planned? Mm, I wouldn't say he was fully planned, but I did mention to my partner at the time, same dad, that like, hey, I'm interested in doing this. So, so kind of, yeah. I will let you finish what you're about to say, but yeah. there is a reason why I asked that. So what are you going to say? No, no, you go. So what I am going to say is when you found out you were pregnant. Freaked out. But was there a part of you So that excited. <laughs> there was a part of you that said, I'm going to make this work. Yes. My last two relationships, second to last one was psychotic. 
where she was almost trying to manifest always getting pregnant, even though I would either wear a rubber or be the pullout king. And literally, she'd be like, I'm pregnant, and would buy like five, um, uh, like pregnancy tests. Pregnancy tests. Sorry, I've been up since 4 a.m. And it sounds like she would be looking to get pregnant, and it wouldn't be there. Yeah. And then we broke up, and I wish her nothing but the best, but she had a kid in six months and got married. Whose kid is it? Uh, she's married now, I believe. And she got all religious, which was fascinating. But I'm not I'm not throwing shade. I'm just saying Yeah, but she had a kid in six months. At, so we broke up like June twenty eighteen. Yeah. And like February twenty nineteen, she was engaged with a bump and has a kid. And I I, I don't care. It's I haven't seen her. You don't think this years. is your baby. Ryan how I, Hoppy. How do I word this politely? Oh no, Ryan. What? It's not my ethnicity. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So you, it's not your baby. It's I thought you were going to say like, I don't care if it is or not. It's completely not my ethnicity. Okay. I'm happy to hear that. But if, if it were your ethnicity, would you have been curious? Oh, I, I would be there in a second. I just, I think deadbeat dads make all men look bad. And right now men look really bad at all times. So I completely would have been there. Right. But what I'm saying is then my last ex she thought she was pregnant in May, even though I never complete the task. I always figure out ways to pull out. They were and it real? was and it was COVID. Right. And both times, the 100 times that my ex tried to get pregnant, the second girlfriend, and then the one time that my last ex thought she was pregnant, it was absolute panic in my mind that the world was ending. I didn't have the, oh, I'm going to make this work. Yeah. I thought my whole life was ending. And because I'm job driven, I literally went, I'll never make it in radio. So that's when I knew that there was no sign of me that went, oh, this this could work. Yeah, but even as a mom of two, I a hundred percent had those moments. A hundred percent with both children where I was like, Oh my God, how am I gonna make this work? This is so wild to me. Like um, oh, there goes that, there goes this, like you have those thoughts, but for me, um, you know, the good outweigh the bad, like the, the bad don't really matter once you have your kids. I mean, it's still a struggle and a balance and there are sacrifices you have to make, of course, choosing, um, that route in life, but, uh, that's normal to have those thoughts either, whether you go through with it or not. And I did, I still had those thoughts a hundred percent. I think our thoughts Mm -hmm. were not even in the close range of panic. I was like not even in the right place. I was crying. I I just don't want a kid. Like it was like, oh my God. But she wasn't pregnant. No. Okay. So you were in the clear. I've always been in the clear. I've never felt the only one time and then the period came. No pun intended. I've never really felt the glory of the process. Right. And even if a person says, oh, I'm on the pill, I don't, I. Right. You don't mess around. There's, and it's so funny too, when dudes knock up girls and they're like, oh yeah, I can't believe I got her pregnant. And then you're like, did you pull out? And they're like, no. Cause then people will, okay. Obviously the pull out method's not a hundred percent in the clear. Right. But, and, and we'll take a break we're, get, we're going graphic here. No, I don't want to, no, I don't no, want to no, hear no, the no, word no, no, pull out anymore. But if you're going to do that method, mm-hmm. you got to do it when you're at 75%. Oh my God. If I, you're waiting until. I'm every, done with this conversation because it's like too graphic for my ears. I it's know. gross. <laughs> but that's sex. Yeah, but Why it's not is, guaranteed anyway. For one person, it's 75%. For another, it's 76 It's gross. I don't want to talk about pulling out. Whatever. Yeah, I know. It's a part yeah. of life. Just don't want the image in my head. I have a plan. Okay. I, have, I have an idea. Tell me. We're going to pull out of this segment. Happy hour. Happy hour. The hour will be right back. This following segment's been brought to you by Rich Keeley, the best barber in all the Bay Area. Did he like my jingle the other week? I don't know if he heard it. Damn. I'll do it I, again. I, Rich Keeley, your barber. 
Go get your hair cut. Hell yeah. He's over at Salon Loft on Kennedy Boulevard, right next door to McDonald's, which that is a solid fucking McDonald's. The McDonald's on Kennedy, right by the DeBartolo building. Shout out to one of the best families in all of the Bay Area being the DeBartolos. I love me some DeBartolos. <laughs> that McDonald's, though, next door? Yeah. And those chicken nuggets? Ew. McDonald's is gross. Rich Keeley's great. Go see him for your next hair appointment. This is also being brought to you by WestChasePrinting.com, which I got to hit up DJ Tone because he made me my banner, but it was my old logo and the banner is bent. So we, my mom even brought it up. We got to figure out a way to decorate. Decorize. We need to figure out a way to decorate this wall without making it tacky. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We say know. that every episode. We need to get like a hammer and nails out and like do it. I need to manifest money, which I will. Also, this is being brought to you by fitsagefitness.net. Fit underscore sage underscore fitness on all social media. It's my friend Devin Prasad, who I've known for eight years, and he's a sage, and he's also a fitness expert, and uh, he's a father of five kids, and he's a very amazing father, and he's a married man, loyal, been with her for 17, 15 years amazing guy one of my favorite human beings that i've ever met and i truly mean that and he's got different membership packages and you go there and you could even work out with us because we're going to begin working out again because he told me that when i filmed him working out for tiktok to promote his brand when i did it i got him all the views because of my height but when he used a tripod it wasn't the same so we're going to do a little barter deal and work out soon so hopefully tomorrow this is also being brought to you by Amir Academy of Martial Arts at amiracademy.com. The reason I'm doing all these live reads right now is because we're 35 minutes into the show and I don't want to keep taking breaks. So for all the info, go to ryanhoppyradio.com. And lastly, yes. if you are looking to do a podcast and you don't know how to do it and Everybody goes, oh, I want to do a podcast. I want to do a podcast on vasectomies. I'm just kidding. I want to do a podcast on this and that. Well, go to podcastmanifest.com and you can hire me to bring my board and my equipment and everything to your business, your house, even if you want to come to my apartment. I will do all the work. All you got to do is talk. I will executive produce. I will put it on all the platforms. And hey, maybe you can be as cool as... Happy hour. Happy hour. He's the voice of a generation that got screwed by the baby boomers. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Listen to Hoppy Hour at any time, anywhere. Search Hoppy Radio on all major streaming platforms. Call Hoppy now. 856-49-HOPPY. Tweet at him at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Or chat him live via the Hoppy Radio app. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. The Green Bay Packers Lambeau Field wouldn't be Lambeau I love my Green Bay Packers. without the tailgating, the brats, and the beer. It's a brewski. Brewski's for the Packers. Go Pack! Now, the oldest franchise in the NFL is the first to try something groundbreaking. You want a sticker? Sure. Section Yellow, a first-of-its-kind sobriety station offering support and community for fans who don't drink. Section Yellow is not anything about abolishing or saying no to drinking. We just want to give a safe area for people that are sober. But this has expanded beyond what your expectations were? Immensely. The Detroit. That's all I need to play. That is quite possibly, when it comes from a league that is literally the mafia and run by a bunch of sociopathic billionaires, and I know it wasn't an owner that came up with the idea, but I thought that was so cool. And so amazing because imagine you're a football nerd or something like that or just a fan that doesn't want to drink and you want to see the Packers and you're around a bunch of drunk assholes. That is one yeah, of the best does ideas. It, 
does it work if I, let's say you and I are together, I don't drink a lot anymore. Would I ditch my friends just to go to the sober side and hang? Or maybe you go with people that are sober. You're a recovering alcoholic. Okay. I could see that. I'm just saying like a lot of my friends are sober actually. Um, and some are not, but I feel like dividing us would be weird. But if you're... Well, it's their choice. It's an optional thing. It's, yeah, I guess it's cool that they're making a safe space for people who want to go enjoy the tailgating atmosphere. Have you seen the videos of NFL fights? It gets bad. Some people might just want Are you wanna, serious? Oh, yeah. Like the is Las Green Vegas, Bay known for like not, having... Not Green Bay, but this is probably going to go nationwide. And even Green Bay, there's not the best. It's... It's adrenaline. I've never, that's the only sport I haven't been to. And it's because tickets are so fucking expensive. But I see the videos online, mm -hmm. especially if you're at a, like a loser organization like Cleveland or we always talk Jacksonville about is good this year. Yeah. But Jacksonville in the past, there's always fights because they're mad that the team is losing. Weird. And the Packers are good right now, but there's some vicious fights. So maybe you just want to go see the game. And because whenever there's drinking and you got someone with a small dick and they got their small dick energy and they feel like they need to pick like a fight. Like Andrew Tate, hashtag small dick energy. Yes. And going back to last week, I said that I liked Andrew Tate's opinion on the fact that it's easier for a woman to get a date than a man. I didn't <sighs> say I liked anything else about him, but that's in the past. I'm just saying that I. Th what, you don't think that's true? I literally hate everything about him, and I don't even want to hear you say that you like one thing that comes out of his mouth. So let's move on to the NFL tailgating. <gasps> oh, no. <laughs> we almost did it. Yeah, so the tailgating, that's great. Sober option. I think that's wonderful. Um, I think this must be part of the NFL culture. I don't see a ton of... Although it happens, actually, scratch that. There's looting from hockey teams. And, um, you know, I've had family members travel to different places wearing the lightning jersey and getting, you know, hollered at and threatened and things like that. I guess it depends what city you're in and, and the rivalry. You're the biggest loser if you get mad at sports because those millionaires that are going home to their mansions and maybe they're loyal to their wife, maybe they cheat, maybe they're in the closet, whatever they do, when they're doing whatever they're doing, they're not going... Oh man, Jimmy from, uh, Jimmy from State Farm. No, <laughs> who's that? No, like let's say Jimmy is from Nashville and he is a huge Tennessee Titans fan, and he got into a fight at a game. Do you think Ryan Tannehill or Derrick Henry are going home and seeing the video and being like, man? Jimmy from Nashville, who went to our game, he really defended our honor. That's what I never get about the people that get into fights at games. Is None of the players are impressed. I don't know. There, There is a level of respect. So, like, there's common, uh, you know, banter. There's common call-outs when you're at a sports game that is like, oh, that's funny. Okay, it is what it is. Right, you know, opposing teams. But then there's a level you don't cross. There's a level you don't cross. And I think that's when it's, like, attacking the players. Or any Philadelphia Eagle fan. Oh, is I that not to, is that not true? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> excuse me. You know what a Philadelphia sports? <laughs> you didn't sports even say God bless you. Bless you. I don't believe in God. We're gonna fix that. Oh, so if I were to die right now, I'd go to heaven. Yeah. Oh, hey, yeah. and then you would haunt me with your spirit. I would haunt you. I would make <laughs> sure to haunt you. No, but going back to my point, what were we talking about before I started thinking about dying? I'm going to like keep messing with your brain. <laughs> you are scary. You were me. saying Philadelphia Eagles, which I know nothing about. All right. So you know about the city being very violent and angry about oh, sports? No, my sister moved to Pittsburgh. Just kidding. Yeah. Pittsburgh is a cooler city. So Philadelphia, the fans are known for always being mean. And uh, when Ian Beckles played, he said they were just not the best fans and they take it very seriously. Yeah. And they the bad fans make all fans look bad. But here's the funny part. Right. Is it's equivalent to a good cop. The bad fans have more of the power. The good cops don't have as much power 
power as the bad cops you know this- and the good cops defend the bad cops. So when the good <laughs> Philadelphia sports fans are defending the bad Philadelphia sports fans, you're no different. Because if you talk to an actually good Philadelphia sports fan, they go, oh, we're not all bad. And they'll never admit that there's the bad ones. And it's like, shut up. I actually, this just rang a bell. You all we, suck. We call the uh, Ralph's mob with the Tampa Bay Rowdies, the soccer team, right? We, yes. The, the cheers, the squad in there that has their section. We call them the mob. And I just thought, holy crap, wait a second. We're talking about like violence and sports from fans. And Europe with the soccer has literal mobs that like chase people with like lead pipes down the street. I mean, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but also not like. Not really. Yeah, so like this is a thing. Like this is normal. It's not just NFL. It's soccer, European League soccer. It's you know I've heard of crazy, crazy violence from fans. Even in like, I want to say somewhere in Asia, but what am I thinking of? Anyways, there's violence. It happens. Well, it's just sad because you just want to watch the game and have fun, and then you have and all go of that watch happen. Some golf. <laughs> My <laughs> grandpa. Loves watching golf. Rest in peace for the last 13 years. But my God. He loves golf. Yeah. I found this video. It is the best of Philadelphia fans. Let's see what this does. All right. So it's just showing them chanting. I'll look that up later and I'll play it on the next show. 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-494-6773. In a leak that's sure to stun the royal palaces and is already making headlines around the world. Prince Harry reportedly says in his new book that his brother and future king, Prince William, physically attacked him back in 2019. Prince Harry might be the biggest rat ever. He's like, why does my fan, I'm not defending either of these ass wipes, but I love when Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are like, why does everybody hate us? And it's like, because I wouldn't trust you with a secret. I wouldn't trust you to piss on me to get away the fire, whatever the quote is. Literally, I, I wouldn't trust them with anything. I'm not defending Prince William for allegedly attacking him. Mm-hmm. But my God, he is like the opposite of the mafia. Prince Harry can't keep a secret for shit. You feel that? Sure. Why? You into the royal family? What's so good about the royal family? The fact that they covered up Prince Andrew? Oh, a family of integrity. Tell me, tell me. Oh, no, I don't know. I don't know. I'm like on the fence. I can see, I think with every family, there's effed up shit. Yeah. So there's things there. Just say fucked up shit. Because if we were on the radio, (laughs) we wouldn't swear. People know that. So go on. Um. Yeah, so I think with every family, there's a fucked up shit. And then I also think we have family patterns. Now, these patterns are conditionings that create our family dynamic that have been passed on generation from generation, right? It's just the way the family functions. It's how the family communicates, how they handle stress, how they, um, you know, uh, present themselves to other people. So all of this factors into every family and the royals are just a spotlight and I believe they have the good and the bad of every family. So sometimes I'm like, you know, nostalgic and I'm like, oh, this is so, you know, sweet and let's honor them and honor them for what? I don't know. uh, I don't mean honor them. I just mean like, I'm not like anti the royal family. I'm not anti them. I just don't think they're any different than anybody else. I'm very much about that like attitude that we're all going to die and we all poop in the morning and none of us matter. So when I see this this great family being bowed down to. I'm like, for what? They were born into it. They were born into it. Yes. But we're all born into something. Oh, really? (laughs) I didn't know that. Yep. Uh, I think I was an accident too. Were you? My mom's birthday is December 12th and I was born September 3rd. So it's like perfect timing. Oh, it was birthday sex. Birthday sex. Do-do-do-do-do-do. There's a reason why Jeremiah was a popular singer and I didn't exact or was that Trey Song? Jeremiah. He was the one that sang Birthday Sucks. Oh, is he? I don't even know. Uh, who knows? The confrontation over his wife, Megan. That's according to the British newspaper The Guardian, which says it has seen an advanced copy of Harry's highly anticipated new memoir, Spare. M- oh, we're so excited about it. BC News has not yet obtained the book. 
Oh, okay. Um, here's the thing. Yes. I don't think she's done anything good for Harry besides maybe make him money by like signing a fifty million dollar podcast deal and then making two episodes and going on Oprah. Like, yeah, she's made him money, but my God, is she a horrible person? She just seems to, and he brought it upon himself to date her. But here's when I knew I didn't like that dummy. And he's a dummy too, so it has nothing to do with her being a female. So I don't want anybody saying that. Here's how I knew she was fake. When she met him. Who are we talking about? Meghan Markle. Oh, when, okay. When, when she met him. Yeah. She claims. Yes. That she has no idea who he was. Yeah, okay. And maybe that's why... There's two scenarios, Alessia. No, she's either a, she's lying, she's or, crazy, or that's why she never made it big is because you don't know who one of the most power, powerful men is. And Listen, we and we know that's not the scenario. I don't want the feminist to attack me because I view myself as one because I see online yes. that so many women are coming to her defense. Why? Like, wow, you know, she just wants to be different. She's calling out the racism. She wants to be acknowledged. Like she's not doing what Diana did and all this stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. But I read people and have studied people and went to school literally to like learn how to like read people. And I consider myself good at reading people. Point is, I can see right through that woman. I'm sorry. The second I saw her face, I'm like, this lady is so full of shit. And I feel sad that Harry is so blind to it. She must be a fun time in the bedroom. No, all. it's not even that. What like, is it? You know, it's like when you look at couples and you're like, how does this person believe all this BS and like live this like, like, how do they not get it? You know, and like she's one of those people I think was chasing fame. She was even interviewed by Ellen DeGeneres. I remember watching that episode of Ellen and thinking like, oh my God, she is so phony when she speaks. That's my opinion. I think Meghan Markle, like whatever, God bless you, do your thing, girl. But I, I see right through her. I don't sense genuinity from her. At all. And I can't stand it. And this is not to tear apart harry or her for wanting to disconnect from the family that's not it that's not it i just think she's full of it catches but, herself in lies and stirs up all these problems and like i think harry's her like latest catch but that like has fallen for this hoax i tried so hard not to interrupt you but i got mad Tell me. this whole i don't or this whole thing where they're trying to disconnect from the family they claim they're trying to disconnect from the family, but then they're making Netflix specials, going on Oprah, making a podcast, and making a book off of it. So you're just not hanging with the family, but all your clout is about bashing the family. Yes. If you were yes. if you were to really disconnect, you would pull like a Zach Efron and go off the grid for a year. I admire Zach Efron for yeah, that. Yeah, he's pretty cool. I really like that he does that. But this whole, oh, we're not a part of the family, then don't use their fucking name for clout. Oh, wait, that's right. Meghan Markle was a middle-of-the-road actress, and she was a girl on Deal or No Deal. That's and then Prince Harry was born into money. It's not like they have any talent. How would she not know like who he is when, when they met? Like she, I didn't even know like who he was. Shut the F up, girl. Come on on but then she said she was obsessed with the royal family growing up like there's oh but she didn't know the one guy from it got it that's like it's like watching basketball and not knowing who like lebron is or something or i'm trying to figure out in your interest because i know you watch a little bit of sports but you're not a big sports fan what would that be equivalent to in your interest of like not knowing one of the top names that's like not knowing the vice president, even though some people don't. Like, you're not going to know one of the main people? No, it it literally makes no sense. And it's, and it's bullshit. She's and a I, dirty, rotten liar. I can understand that, like, you want to pull away and bring light to things. Yeah. Like, they, their claim is they want to bring light to, like, the injustices going on within the system. And I'm not, listen, I'm not saying... Mm -hmm. There aren't. I said in the beginning before we started that there are families and every family has something, right? The dynamic that is that is toxic, right? With my family, it's like we don't talk about shit and we ignore it and we move on and that's not healthy, right? So every family <gasps> has like a dynamic. 
right? And they want to call out those injustices. I just don't buy her for a second. And I think I'm like, Harry, are you blind? Are you blind to this? How are you so, it, what's the word? It, not innocent. How are you naive? How are you so naive to like, he should know how to read people. He's met so many people in his lifetime from all different cultures. Like he should be better at reading people. Sorry, but yeah. I wonder if he was looking for a way to get Americanized. You know what I mean? Because he didn't seem like he wanted to be there, you know? Yeah, exactly. You know what would be a great business idea? What? I should go to school to be a dentist and then move to Britain. I'd make so much money. Oh my God, do they not know what is it with their teeth? But I'm not trying to be rude. No, in their defense. What is their, please tell me, because I don't want to sound uninformed, but my God, do they not have toothbrushes out there? What is it? It's fascinating. Well, for me, that's a great question. I do have friends from um, England. I'd have to ask them. Tell me. I think every culture is different. And if they're good with it, then they're good with it. (laughs) I know it's a stereotype. It is. But also in Spain, a lot of the women have wrinkles and gray hair and they're not concerned with getting Botox and and hair dye. I'm traditional, man. But you want them to get braces. Sorry, your hair can be gray, but just don't have jacked up but teeth. You're, but your your smile something different. Getting older is a badge of honor. So it's okay to invest in your mouth, but don't inject your face. I really want you veneers. Look- There's this doctor. I actually set up a consultation. I cannot afford veneers at all. I, know, I really want... <sighs> But Dude, I kind doesn't of doesn't it wa- suck not being rich? Because I would get veneers tomorrow. I want them too. I know I want them too. Like I follow this doctor, Doctor Brandon. I should look him up. Mm-hmm. He's in Tampa. Maybe I maybe he'll sponsor this and and let me get some free veneers, <gasps> which will never happen. Yeah. But um, yeah, Doctor Brandon Mac. He's in Tampa. So I set up a consultation. Return of the Mac via Zoom because the in person consultation was three hundred dollars, and I cannot do that right now. I but do I it. desperately want. Like fake teeth, like that's my, oh, that's my oh, next move. I, <laughs> I wasn't sure where you're going with that. Fake t- teeth. Yeah. The way in <laughs> the way you said tea, like fake. T- I was yeah. like, whoa! T- 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 I was like, wow! You're getting really comfortable on the show. Also, I didn't think you were like that, but you're not. Eight five six forty nine. Hoppy. Speaking of a boob. Simon Cowell is sharing why he backed out of having his own talk show. Because he realized he doesn't have any talent. The former American Idol judge recently spoke with E! News and shared about how his anxiety kept him from having his own show, saying, quote, No, I was offered one once. Okay. And literally I got to the point where they built the set and I start to get anxious and then really stressed out and I just walked out the meeting. And I just went, I literally couldn't do this. I just couldn't talk to people all day long. I'm not very good at talking. You don't say. Your whole act was you critiquing people. Maybe people wouldn't want to be on your show. While the 63-year-old might not have his own talk show, he has found major success as a TV judge on American Idol. And a major major success of being and his friend's wife on a boat. You know about that? No. Yeah. He, he was, did not. Look at him. On a boat. And on America's Got Talent. Access Hollywood recently spoke with Simon, and he opened up about the possibility of a U.S. revival of The X Factor. X Factor. Yes. I've heard rumor, maybe, possibly, potentially, coming back. Only maybe. If, only if it's here. Really? Yeah. I- All right. Here we go from the Daily Mail. Simon Cowell reveals he is not proud over how he got his friend's wife pregnant after swiping her on her husband's yacht. Weird. There's another radio One guy. One time I snuck onto a yacht. Oh, wow. <laughs> It's fascinating. (laughs) That was dumb. So there's another radio guy that I'm a big fan of out in London. His name is Chris Moyles. Yeah. And he's kind of like a shock jock in London. And he's someone I listen to a lot and kind of have been influenced by. And he had a big radio show on BBC One back on Radio One, which was like the top 40 hits from like 95 to 2012. Now he's on Radio X and he does well out there. But he had a co-host named Comedy Dave who was his sidekick and he was at a party and comedy Dave recently broke up with his wife 
and Chris Moyles was seen hanging out with Comedy Dave's wife, and then the show ended six months later, and Comedy Dave doesn't talk to Chris anymore. Mm. I don't know what, and I'm not trying to be stereotypical, be but Simon Cowell and Chris Moyles are both in London, and they're both rich people that judge people on TV out in uh, the right. out in the UK and Britain. I don't know if that's a thing, banging your buddy's wife, and not consensually, like, brother. <laughs> if you didn't get that reference, then you're out of touch, brother. But if, if it's consensual, then maybe... But even then, that was leaked. Uh, that was a weird. Tampa has weird culture, man. When when you explain to people, <laughs> when I've explained to people my life, I have like a family that lives a very middle class life in uh, Chicago, and they're like, "Wow, you guys are sluts in Tampa." And I'm like, "Yeah." <sighs> when I say the word slut, I totally didn't mean to transition into this. I'm I'm having a I mental breakdown. Get, no, I didn't even get to tell you. Like, I've been waiting this whole show to tell you about this. And I don't think I had a chance to tell you because we haven't seen each other. What happened? Okay. Did I tell See, now I'm having mom brain. I don't know. You tell probably. me if I told you this. Okay. Tell just, and then we'll move forward. It's okay. Uh, so I went on a date with somebody from Hinge and the date was horrific. We spoke for like 45 minutes, an hour and a half. I, don't, I was Is this your first or second hinge date? It was my second hinge date. So I haven't heard about this. First date with this person. And he was telling me, so it, we got into it because he said, hey, what books have you read lately? And I was honest. And I said, oh, I'm reading this book, Man Enough, which is about masculinity. Long story short, we spent 45 minutes debating. He doesn't think women are equal to men. And then I eventually Small dick energy. And then I eventually got up and was like, All right, nice to meet you, which I regret saying. And then I got it, I left. But get this, here's <gasps> here's the kicker. I call an Uber. I'm I'm heated. You have to understand, this was not just like he mentioned that he doesn't believe women are equal to men. We sat and debated it for a solid 45 minutes to an hour. I'm sure he's a big Ben Shapiro and Jordan Peterson fan. Um, I'm sure. Yeah. I, I'm sure he's an Andrew Tate fan. But anyways, so I was mortified. I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe there are people like this. I can't believe the things that came out of his mouth, how he expects me to like want it. Like he expects a woman to stay home and like do all these, you mm -hmm. know, traditional roles. He doesn't think a woman should work and be financially independent, oh. all this stuff. Why is he single? I think like a lot of women would go for that because they want that financial, you know, yeah, uh, stability. Sugar, sugar babies. Right, right. Not me though. Um, yeah, you're an independent woman. Independent. Anyway, so I get in my Uber, which this was completely inappropriate to bring up, but I'm like, hey, oh my God. He's like, how was your night? I'm like, he's probably expecting me to say like fine or good. And I, just, <gasps> I laid it on him. Okay. Oh, he didn't ask for it. Geez. I laid it on the Uber driver. Yeah, I was did. like, you won't believe this date I just had. Were he you thinks, a little tipsy? No, I wasn't at all. Oh man. I was heated though, which is like 10 times worse. You don't want me heated. So then he's like, uh, how was your date? I'm like, oh my God. And I unloaded. I was like, you won't believe this guy I went out with thinks women are not equal to men. And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, pause, awkward pause. Do you think women are equal to men? I asked my Uber driver this and he goes, uh, no, I don't. Two men in one night. Two men in one and night. And these fucking scumbags make all men look bad. In I'm tired of this. No, I, I, I'm tired of this. There's a radio guy in fucking St. Louis that I listened to who fucking was, he was. What was he doing? Asking, listen, he was asking listeners for like naked pictures or just pictures of them, but then would end each message with LOL, just kidding. And he just got fired. And I'm a. I'm an acquaintance with the host of that show, so I'm not going to talk about it. But you have that scumbag, the co-host. Then you have Andrew Tate. Then you have all these people. And then it sucks to be a good person like me because I, I, I tell every girl on a dating app, I'm not like the other guys. And I go, by saying that, I know I sound like the other guys, but I, I will tell women, I'm embarrassed to be a male right now. And I am sorry you 
I have to deal with that. And then I'll get their number and I'll tell the women, I go, I am so sorry that you have to deal with those creeps. And then that's how I will usually get a girl's number. And anytime I've had either fun with a woman or had a girlfriend, I always take the approach of being a nice guy. Right. But that might be because I'm a nice guy and these people, not that you well, go out with douchebags. It comes but, down to culture too. Yeah. I mean, it comes down to culture and how you're raised. I'm terrified that this person could potentially have children and raise up this mentality, but that mentality can also be the racism mentality. It could also be masculinity, uh, misogyny, a misogynistic mentality. There's so many different mentalities on how we're raising our children. It's scary. But yeah, I couldn't believe two guys in one night thought this mm -hmm. and and again listen people men and women have different qualities we have different strengths yeah and we have different weaknesses but it doesn't mean we're not equal beings this this guy was trying to straight up tell me like hey like you wouldn't want he's, he was in my face he's like you wouldn't want me to like financially care for you and i'm like no i'm good and i'm like if you want to financially care for me then why the fuck did i just pay for our drinks happy hour Happy hour. And like that, he's gone. Happy hour is now over. Happy hour is now over. Happy hour is now over.